see this at the team. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We got another episode of Chart Talk coming at you. It is Tuesday, October 25th. We got the market rallying, a ridiculous rally over the past two weeks. Um, so let's get right into the market outlook. Let me uh, let me share my screen right here. Allow me to share that screen host. Here's the, I got the spot chart up. You know, this was the CPI that came in two Thursdays ago. It came in worse than expected, and yet uh, market opened down and, you know, we rallied. Uh, pulled back into the rally, but buyers stepped up and kept stepping up higher. Now we've had a pretty ridiculous last three days. Uh, this was the Friday pivot, and then this week was just been uh, straight up. So we've got a lot of good price action this week, and uh, there's a lot of other things going on. The, the reason for the move this week, here's the 10-year, the TNX. Uh, we're finally seeing this pull in a little bit, but the real thing is the dollar, the DXY, US dollar. Um, we're seeing a, a, a meaningful pull in in the dollar, and that should really help stocks move higher. But um, you know, on the same side of the coin, we just got some earnings. We just got Google earnings. They were not so hot, as you can see, post-market. Uh, they're trading. They closed here 104. They're trading now down here at 98. Uh, Microsoft, similar, not as bad of a uh, reaction to the report. They're down, what would you say, about one and a half percent, two percent. And so the next, now the big question is the NASDAQ, you know, we had this huge day today and now we're negating almost the entire day. It's kind of the perfect setup for the, uh, the screw bar that we have seen so many times this year, which virtually is we see an extension day and then the next day sets up um you know negating most of that previous sessions gains it opens up around the lows kind of flushes out and then you know sellers take over from there um so that's a big question going to tomorrow how will we react to these earnings but in the meantime we've gotten some great action uh since that little october 13th low if you know if it's a low if it's a uh you know intermediary low I, I i think we continue to bounce but i don't think the lows are in for the year i think you know fed's got to raise rates still a few times i don't think that's priced in uh so i'm gonna stop the share from there uh what are you thinking over there all right so i got a dog trying to eat the deer outside if i do apologize before if he starts freaking out <sighs> one second so again you definitely hit on a lot of the big stuff again i'm not going to talk about the spy of the 10 years since you covered that um again a lot of sectors a lot of strength out there again energy your favorite sector shake heading oh, towards that well i'm just going with our, our little bet from last week of the energy versus don't don't yeah. say energy is my favorite sector high no, okay, okay. and an uptrend yeah it's well any, yeah, the energy, strongest sector all year yeah energy is definitely 100 yeah, with you yeah. this leader you know working its way back towards its retest so energy right now is kind of the leader i'm seeing a lot of the other sectors just setting up in these bases and as of today a lot of them kind of pushing out of that this mini base is for the last like month or so you can see that like ibb the biotech sector kind of preparing for this kind of like 124 breakout and you're seeing a lot of the other sectors you know mid caps breaking out today you know small you know, here we go small caps very similar theme here where a lot of these names are kind of pushing up out of this little base which is definitely a good sign for us but this is not the time to just broadly chase things. I know for, again, you reminded me that Net Microsoft had an earnings today, so I got out of that, luckily, um, to get trapped in that, which wasn't the biggest gap down, but still don't want to get trapped. But we're seeing this push out of this base, and maybe we do start to see a move, you know, into what we saw earlier, you know, we started to negate some of this broader downtrend, but it's hard to start chasing today or tomorrow if you weren't positioned for these moves. So if you're in names already, it's great to stick with them, but trying to chase some of these sectors that are up three, four percent are up two, three days in a row, I think is going to be a difficult trade for most. So that's my little take, Shake, if you want to jump in with any top ideas or good and bad trade. And then... um, I think we should also touch upon um, China action. Jeez, see what happened with China? Yeah, they're killing my favorite stock in the world. They're just killing uh, Baba. Baba. Baba's hurt. Baba's hurt. I, I wanted this P PDD. Think Duo Duo to come back doesn't look like it's going to come back anytime soon. Yeah, so China, uh, uh, they're the 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 state, the uh, Chinese they can't, Communist they can't, Party they is, can't hear us. So <laughs> the Chinese Communist Party is just like taking over companies and taking a larger stake for themselves. So uh, all foreign investment is pretty much leaving the company, leaving the country, uh, and everyone just you know liquidating all their China holdings because no one knows you know what's real, what's fake at this point. 
So I was wondering if that could actually give, you know, the U.S. market a little boost. Obviously, mm-hmm. you got to take money out of China, you know, probably most likely not sitting in cash for all these, you know, big funds and whatever. So could be more money, money entering the U.S. market. But um, I digress from there. Um, a few charts setting up now, given to account, take into account, you know, spies entering resistance. We're walking, in, we're walking into a gap down no matter what tomorrow, you know, unless these names somehow recover big time after hours, which, you know, uh, where Google's trading, you know, that doesn't look like it's going to, you know, fill that gap. Um, so we'll see how we handle that gap down tomorrow. You know, if, if we immediately take out those lows in NASDAQ, it might be an opportunity short, honestly, to just hit the, hit the market short against intra- intraday highs. That's the uh, screw bar setup. But some individual setups I like. This RYTM, uh, I got in this one today. Um, didn't give great follow through. Kind of closed right at my price here. So we'll see what's uh, you know, we'll see what's happening tomorrow. I love the consolidation this is coming out of. Um, this ACLX. This is very similar. And you you touched on the biotechs uh, beginning to break out, mm-hmm. and the mid caps and small caps. So the beautiful part about when that happens, it becomes such a great trading environment for things like this, for things like this ACLX, which is a very small biotech name. You'll see, but it will become you know. A, traders are all going to recognize this pattern by out of consolidation. We'll see huge volume. You buy 20 with either a 19 or 18 stop. You'll see this thing quickly fly out of this consolidation to the high 20s. That's, mm-hmm. you know, that's a lot of the action we saw in 2014, 2015 when biotechs were so hot. It was They are so, so much fun to trade. That's why I was gravitating towards those names today. Um, uh, I, this SRPT still hangs around. Mm-hmm. I think it's got to wait for these yeah. I was looking at that earnings yeah, November 2nd. Yeah, but I mean, beautiful pattern. Just refuses to sell off. Somebody's buying it. Uh, CQP, you know, nice macro consolidation. Don't know if I will actually buy this one. It's more of a grinder than a than mm-hmm. a breakout stock. And they have earnings coming up early November, so chart looks good. Likely goes higher, but I don't know if I'll trade this one. And um, um, breakout watch. We got some more biotechs. Is uh, NBIX. Uh, watch for the breakout through that one fourteen area. Um. And then we got a ton of earnings I got to go through still, but you know, that's the gist of it. What you looking at over there? All right. So it's always funny when we're looking at the same names. Let me go one up. Hold on. So you just mentioned CQP, more of a grinder again. A um, little bit more like a slower name. Kind of and my it's favorite opinion. sector. My opinion. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a little one joke. But yeah, so I actually put an order in, in the CQP through that 57 half versus 55 half. So $2 risk here, again, got back up to highs, very strong, top right. Energy sector is leading right now, working its way towards it, the sector itself, back towards its prior 52-week high. So strong sector, tight risk stop, and the chart pattern, we would call you know not blue sky breakup because it broke this 57, 58 area before, but it's blue-ish sky where it's you know basically there. So that, you know, I will definitely buy that if it takes it out. Again, if it doesn't go in the next couple of days. Pretty much, if it doesn't really go tomorrow. The next day, I'll cancel the order until after earnings. I'm not trying to like have a trade up for a couple of days. Um, but going on to some current trades, or you know, I had again Microsoft. Thank you, Shake. I forgot that it had earnings today, so you kind of remind me right before the close. I took this off for a very marginal gain. It was nothing to lose, kind of sleep over, but again, better than losing or being down a percent and a half in it. This APLS has kind of had my name. I'm kind of over two in it. Um, I took a trade in it earlier last week with one of the members and we just got shooken out. You know, we gave it, no, we didn't give it too much room. I guess we gave it too little room because this was the, the real out was this 54 half area. Didn't really want to give it that much room when you got two, eight, two points to follow through and then it just closes pretty crappy. But when it set back up later this week, tried it again. But again, same thing. We see this lower high forming today. This was the high of the trigger. This is this now lower high. And now I got to give it versus 56. I don't want to really give this name four bucks when it's giving me a dollar of upside day one. So this one, it was just easier to take the break even trade. And if it goes tomorrow, you know, so be it. But this was just kind of, you know, keep it on this little base here, but just not getting kind of a good trade with the name. Do you, uh, are you planning on buying it back? You know, it takes out tomorrow's highs, yesterday's highs tomorrow? Tomorrow, no. I think I think I have to just let it go. I think if... If this sets, if this pulls in tomorrow, if this was sets up for a couple more days, 
um, probably, but tomorrow, no, I think I'd have to just pass on it. Cause I think then it's just me getting back, like just losing the conviction and getting back in. So for me, it's kind of, oh, oh again, I was probably going to go tomorrow just because I'm out of it now, but two trades in it. One was, you know, two, 3% loss. This was break even. Um, but again, just seeing these, these lower highs, you know, how to get out of it. Um, two that are, are working. Humana is working very nicely. Again, I mentioned before, blue ish sky, you know, other name where, Again, blue sky breakouts when the stock is taking out two week highs. Blue skies, there's nothing in front of it. Blue ish skies is when it's kind of taking out the level before. And that would be very marginal right here. Like it tried to break this 510. So it was a little bluish, but for now, again, it's working itself higher. For now, I've raised the stop to break even. Or initially, when I got into this, I was given the stop versus 480. Once it triggered, as of yesterday, I kind of raised it versus 500. And now today we're getting just, you know, very good follow through that for now, if this was to come back to my price, it'd be silly to lose money in it when I'm, you know, at the peak of it up 30 points um, in the trade. So it's now a break even trade. This one's working pretty nicely. Again, me and Shake have a little bet going on. If XOM increases by 20%, I will wear whatever Shake wants me to wear on a chart talk. If Humana gets to 600 first, Shake has to dress like me for one of the videos. So we'll see which one gets to wear. And lastly, for me, to about trade is this Hershey's. Got you know, was looking to buy through this two twenty eight area. Got caught on this gap up, but it's working into this retest. So for now, we'll see if it will push through this retest area tomorrow, or if this is going to be. We're going to see kind of a doze get highs tomorrow. And it's going to retrace. If it does, I'll get stopped out for again very marginal gain. If it wants to continue higher, so be it. Um, and again, for top ideas, really, it's just that C. What was it? CP. DQP through that 57 half area. That seems to be kind of the main one. And is there anything <clears> else? <throat> I think that's really it. Oh, this was one. This reminded me of actually that SRPT just flagging out. You know, you mentioned like, oh, and then the earnings just that, took it away. Earnings and earnings, earnings took it away. And that was kind of like Netflix. You know, we were watching this Netflix for so long, um, had a couple of trades in it. Just couldn't chase us into into earnings, and of course, it took the trade away from us. Um, so that SRPT just reminds me very much of these two. Maybe not Netflix chart wise, because you know bottom right where these are kind of top right, but just them. Uh, I guess it's kind of SRPT is actually very similar to Netflix. Yeah, no, it's a really nice chart. Um, I was actually planning on watching that those SRPT earnings and potentially buying through the higher flag after hours mm -hmm. in case it gives like a Netflix move. Because mm -hmm. I mean, it, if you if you were watching that Netflix move, you had the opportunity to buy it after hours. That two two fifty or whatever it was, mm -hmm. it flagged for a few minutes right in front of the level uh, after hours, and then just you know now it's you know it's not even on the chart. But so that that was my plan for SRPT. You know, someone's holding it this long, holding it up this long, um, all quarter. It's really gone nowhere for the entire quarter. Looks amazing weekly, monthly. That's one you I think I want to you know might put some risk on after hours for. Yeah. This one is like almost like a quarter ahead of Netflix, like chart wise, where SLPD had that massive gap down, based out for almost a year, finally broke out. And now it's flying again underneath it, this gap fill, this red line. And <laughs> Netflix is like a little bit behind it. And that was the trade going into this right. was to buy into this through 250 into this gap fill and expecting resistance at some point for Netflix to be met when it filled the gap. And then whatever pattern forms after that, that's like SRPT now. It's it build the gap. It's now flag and maybe earnings takes it back up into you know that prior area. Right, um, right. And to take it one step further, what we were talking about earlier is the strength in biotechs mm -hmm. and all these therapeutic names have been ripping. And you know, we're seeing these, you know, NBIX and uh ACLX and whatever, you know, all these we're seeing a pattern of of smaller biotechs, smaller therapeutic names breaking mm -hmm. out. So, you know, it just adds to the story. Uh, positive attribute layers of probability. Okay. Okay. All right, Jake. Well, that was all I have on my end. Um, I I got some I got some trades for you. Oh, let's do it. Pretty good. Pretty pretty uh good week in that rally. So, Might as well. Here's the here's the, here's the one uh, loss I took this FL Foot Locker. A uh, little bear flag here. You can see I shorted through the lows here. Just kind of, kind of tripped up. Small loss there. Um, and then. And the annoying part about all these, it's like Friday, we had a strong close, but you know, all year it hasn't been profitable to hold that size over the weekend. 
So mm-hmm. I get out of all these winners on Friday and they're like fucking 5% higher now. <laughs> J&J, I think it was Clay who called this out. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the earnings day, two very tight inside days on earnings. And this is a simple trade. It's not even, you know, going in depth on J&J's earnings or anything like that. It's just whichever way this second inside day breaks, it's so tight. Buyers meeting sellers. It breaks the highs, you get long. It breaks the lows, you get short. Mm-hmm. You know, broke the highs, we got long. Um, and I got a quick three to one sell on the same day, but you know, clearly should have been holding. Didn't want to hold over the weekend, but you know, that's what you get. Uh, LLY, LOI, very similar thing. Um, you know, very strong name, market leader, healthcare name. We like them healthcare names. Bought that 330, got out of most of the size, you know, at resistance on Friday. Didn't expect, you know, this insane market rip. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, you know. To th- like the sixty percent higher for my risk, you know, like mm-hmm. left so much on the table. Uh, so good trade and bad trade at the same time. Uh, we haven't seen that follow through. So CVX, same thing. Uh, caught that breakout Friday, sold most or Thursday. No, this was last. Uh, no, because we were filming chart talk. It was Tuesday, or Wednesday. So I bought. This was Wednesday, bought it, and I sold most out Wednesday and Thursday. Thought it needed a pull in. Absolutely no pull in. Just like five percent higher from where I sold. Uh, <laughs> And then today, the GLNG, um, that is favorite sector energy, just uh, a name that's you know in an uptrend, just buying off support uh, as resistance is meeting it. Um, and I took off like fifty five percent of position, you know, just looking at where the spy is and everything. It's I'm, I'm okay with that one, but so, um, and then, all right, I got some questions for you, Bennett. Mm-hmm. Talk about I actually just I just re- realized. Uh, my, my biggest, I oh, crap, well, my biggest overweight sector, you can see all blue stock I mean, is actually energy. I never, I haven't rebalanced my M1 account since I started it using it like two years ago. And now yeah, it's okay for a second, but right, trading. Let's, let's hear what, uh, let's hear some nine part questions. All right. Um, let's bring up a little seeking alpha. Let's talk about some earnings. All right. So we got some earnings. We got, we got visa beating earnings. Consumers mm-hmm. helped by consumer spending. That's good. Okay. Microsoft, they're not seeing a lot of growth. They're not seeing a lot of uh, growth in the cloud, which means the entire sector isn't, you know, people aren't investing as much in the cloud. Mm-hmm. And same with Alphabet, Google, they had their smallest profit growth since 2013, which is pretty substantial to me. And the last one was this Texas Instruments. This is an industrial name. Um, what was the what was the the quote they had? I wrote it in the chat. Let me see real quick. They, you know, so they beat on they beat on the top and bottom line, but their earnings are down four or five percent because um, they're seeing expanding weakness across industrials, which is you know speaking to you know more of the core of the economy and things like that. What do you think about this earnings season? You think we're gonna uh, that bad news is so baked in that you know we'll see negative earnings be positive? Oh, and the last part about all those things I, I summed up. Uh, all those earnings are down. Uh, Google, Microsoft, and Tech Instruments, but Visa's up. We're seeing financials good. Do mm-hmm. you think we're going to see these companies bounce back, like the Googles? The or we got Apple tomorrow, Amazon. You think we're seeing them bounce back, or you think it's just we got another like three months of hell before earnings repair? I mean, the Visa stuff it's like that's not too surprising. Again, consumer debt is not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, but broadly, again, I kind of think we're kind of past most of the gloomier days. I think we pretty much had this whole year that's been super crappy um, for the most part. And again, the CPI thing, that was going to be the big thing that was going to really crush the market. I think everyone is now getting aware of the CPI Fed. didn't go. CPI went higher though. No, no, I'm saying, but it was like the, the expectation was the market was going to get super smoked on a bad CPI. Number okay. And, and the opposite occurred to that. And I think the so fear- inflation solved. Not at all, but it's just the market is maybe not as fearful as it was leading into that event as it is now. And yeah, I think fair. with the Fed, I think that, you know, the first time they raise rates aggressively, it's super scary. The second time, okay, as they keep doing it, the impact on you and not you and I, but for most people, the, the fear of it or or the emotion of it kind of gets watered down. So I think those are the two big things that have been kind of scaring most people out of the market. I think Maybe those things are kind of on their way out. And then with the earnings, again, these aren't really massive gap downs. You have tech instrument down 4%, Microsoft down barely 2%. These are very tiny gap downs. If Microsoft was down 8% or Texas was down 10%, 
or Google was down, like these big, big gap, like gap downs, then yeah, I think earnings season were, were definitely kind of smoked. But with these very almost insignificant, maybe not Google, okay, down 5%, but the other ones, you know, four or 5%, three, 4%, these aren't these big gap downs. Again, it's a very small sample size. We're talking about four names out of thousands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have- so it's hard to have this blanket statement, but I don't think, uh, as long as we don't see these massive, like, you know, Netflix had, that massive gap down, you know, was it? right. Like if we don't, if we still avoid, if we don't see a lot of these ones, yeah, you know, right. I'm clicking on my screens if you can see it. Like the like that April huge gap down. If we avoid a lot of those, like that early 2022 gap downs and that mid, yeah, those two. If a lot of the earnings season are like what we're seeing right now, where it's they're you know again gap up or gap down, it's always a coin flip with earnings. But if there are these smaller gap downs, I think that's going to show that people aren't aren't as afraid and panicking out of these names. That maybe we do continue to kind of intro way a little bit higher because we are still in a very big range. I'm not saying we're going to like run back to highs, but yeah. the overall downtrend in the SPY for this year, you can conservatively still have a run to 420 and it'd be technically fine, you know, in within that, you know, that just that diagonal dot, you know, dotted line you have, like into yeah. that. I guess that's a 200 day, the red line that your yeah. red MA. So even a bounce into there isn't that unrealistic. And that yeah. isn't really that far off all time highs. It's another what 15, 20% from there. You know, we're seeing it, you know, 10% move in, in a couple, you know, in a week or two off that CPI number. 15, 20% isn't a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, go off the CPI low until, you know, four days later. That's a 10% move right there. So again, I'm not saying we're going to, you know, climb 30% back to all time highs, but I think we can still see, you know, plus 400 and it not be the most unrealistic thing in the short term. Okay. That's fair. What about you? What are you? What are your thoughts on this earnings season? Um, I think we'll see a mixed bag, like you're saying. I think uh, you know we saw the financials responding really well. You type up any bank, any of the big banks, they're all pretty much higher. Uh, you know that Visa, you know that's another good story. So it's good to see the financials holding up the market. Um, but I think there's still a lot of pain in these tech names, Microsoft, Google. I don't think, I don't think we've seen bad enough numbers. I don't know. So uh, my thinking is we we bid a little bit, but the lows are not in. I think. Mm-hmm. We run, you know, hypothetically 400, 405, 410. Um, I, I, the Fed's still got to raise, they got, they're going to raise 75 basis points next week, November 2nd. And then in December, they're going to raise what, 50 basis points. So that's still, you know, a point and a quarter in the next nine weeks to eight weeks. Mm-hmm. So I think that, I think that's going to weigh on the market. I think that creates the new lows. I think that's when we finally see fear in the market. We haven't seen, uh, we haven't seen the, the VIX give anything outrageous. You know, I don't think we're, we're escaping this entire horrible bear market without a VIX move. Mm-hmm. You know, that's we could, of course, but I just, you know, it'd be the first one in history. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I think <laughs> but, I mean, it's like the first, it's like this has never happened before. And it's like, is this the now the time where it is this almost quiet bear market that just, you know, it's maybe not. i mean i don't know maybe i i would love to be wrong I mean, I, i'd much prefer a bull market yeah but it was a lot more fun than you know us selling off 20 percent the last five months but uh so i think you know we get a people bullish i think they drop the drop the floor out once more we get a new low get a little fear going and um we really haven't seen any bad economic data yet fed's got a fed's got a pause on their rate rising we got to see some bad numbers mm-hmm. but you know we gotta and we gotta see inflation come down that's the thing so I think, you know, we keep running for the short term, but uh, we still got a big sell ahead of us. And then from there, it's going to be, that's the time to load the accounts. Uh, spy like 3.30. That's what I think. That's what I think. Um, I think that's all we got for you. Do you anything else? Yeah. I mean, okay. I will do one thing. Again, I got the most hilarious question ever about the watch. Someone asked me to take it off. They put it on. They couldn't get it off, which I still think is the funniest thing in the world. But for anyone who did get this watch, on, on I, underneath here, there's a clasp. You open the clasp. I think mine just came in. I think I, I just saw it just came in. I didn't get a chance oh, to open it. Oh, you got to open it. Yeah, so it's literally it's literally that easy. There is, you know, it was this guy, this first guy's first watch. That's understandable. But again, a little clasp here. You open it, it opens up. The only other, the other cool thing is on the top of this strap. This is the top of the watch. You know, this is like the strap and you're going to close it. This part you can adjust it, so if it's too tight or it's too loose, you can you know you can still take the links out, but on the fly, 
sometimes your watch gets tight and you want to, you know, can't put a link on when you're out of the restaurant, but you can open it. You can adjust a little bit. Yeah, so, a little too much salt at the Italian at the Italian dinner. Yeah, it gets a little tight. It gets a little that. tight. Yeah, you, gotta <laughs> you, come, you go to the gym, you come out. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shake you, and hopefully we'll. I wrote you a little funny letter in there, so maybe you'll get a kick out of it when you open it up. Oh, nice, nice, just nice. Spoil, the, to it. spoil the surprise, but I um, appreciate the little things. Yeah. All right, man. I think we wrapped it up. All right, with that, we'll catch you guys next week. Have a good one.